This psychiatric nurse just began her career eight months ago, and she's already coming home from work feeling exhausted and burnt out. She says some weeks she works 70 hours. Now, she says, it's making her physically sick. I feel like I'm very short-tempered. Um, I just feel tired, sometimes physically unwell. Like, I just get to a point where I just don't want to do anything. Like, I just want to lay in my bed for an entire day. I am standing in front of CAP, the Center for Adult Psychiatry here in Brandon. Here, many psychiatric nurses work and care for patients in crises. These crises can stem from an anxiety attack all the way up to suicidal ideations. When patients are in this crisis, they can cause harm to themselves and others if they don't get the proper care they need. Pamela Mebs is an instructor of psychiatric nursing at ACC. She says she's seen how the burnout of seeing a small number of nurses having to care for a large number of patients is causing high levels of anxiety and stress. But we do deal with a lot more sensitive topics. Um, we deal with a lot of like mental illness, you know, suicide, things like that. Um, so, you know, there's, we're definitely at, at a high risk for burnout. There just aren't enough nurses for everyone that needs one. The Canadian population is 38 million and one-fifth of them suffer from mental illness. And there are only 6,000 psychiatric nurses in Canada, not nearly enough for the proper nurse-to-patient ratio. We're unionized, so the union could step in and say, absolutely not, they can't do any more than you know, 16 hours, a double shift, because after that, you're exhausted, you're not thinking correctly, that's where mistakes can happen. So, but that being said, if there's no nurse to come and relieve you, you're basically forced to stay. The government is taking steps to recruit more nurses in hopes of giving people like Stritz a break. But she says the real problem is hospitals aren't hiring more nurses. Funding's an issue from governments. Incentives, I think a lot of things are backwards. Um, they're trying to do incentives to make nurses work, but they're not willing to hire more. So it just doesn't really equal out very much. I don't really understand it. After but. numerous emails and phone calls, the Minister of Health's office did not respond with its stance on burnout in psychiatric nursing or comments on future plans they may have in place. For Westman This Week, I'm Sydney Houston, Brandon. <laughs> ACC is scoring a great reputation in athletics. Coaching staff is working hard to gain new recruits each year. They have the help from the Cougars Classic, and the recruits recognize the impact of these awards. The more of a freedom, I think, with being able to afford things and not that stress of expenses and all that. So awards, I'd say they do help out for the most part. This will be the eighth annual Cougars Classic Golf Tournament. Organizers say it's been growing every year in popularity. The team behind the scenes starts now. Events like this cost a lot. Is the reward worth the efforts? Well, every year, uh, specifically the golf tournament, we contrib contribute about $50,000 back to the Cougars Athletic Program, um, and that's for student awards. We're fortunate in the college in that, uh, or at our department, the college proper pays for our department, all the salaries and expenses. So. Um, some foundations you have to take off a percentage for all of the time and effort that goes into it. Uh, luckily we don't have to do that. Everything that we do in our department towards fundraising, any dollars we raise goes back out 100% to the projects that we're working on. The athletic director says that the coaches can use these awards as incentives to get new recruits to the program and keep it competitive. These recruits will be volunteering at the Cougars Classic in June, and registration is now open. For Westman This Week, I'm Sydney Houston. Our ACC women's hockey team have just arrived at the New England Sports Center, where the five-day ACHA National Tournament is being held. Our Cougars are two-time champions, and we're here for a third. Let's go check it out. Here's the lobby, where all 72 teams are slowly trickling in to sign in at the front desk before the tournament.
we're now in the skater's edge where the players can come get their skate sharpened, buy new sticks, hats, tape, all the essentials that they would need are right here. Upstairs, where we have all the past championship banners hung up on the ceiling. Like I said, there are 72 teams in this tournament. There are five different divisions. Men's has division one, two, and three, and the women's have one and two. ACC has their own banner from the when they won in 2019 and 2022. But because of COVID, we've had the cup in Canada for four years total. So that makes the stakes even higher to bring the cup back to Canada for another year. Upstairs, they have the canteen. I'm sure this place will be getting a ton of use this week. facility, all with indoor standing room to watch the games, just in case you don't want to go inside and brave the cold. There's also an arcade right behind me, in case you have some free time to kill. We are now standing in front of rink number seven, where our Cougars will be playing their very first round robin game tomorrow at 12.30. Tune in. This city is out clearing streets pushing away the 10 centimeters of snow that fell in our most recent storm. Major streets like 18th are prioritized, then residential areas come next. A tough break for those who swapped out their winter tires early. Some customers that have decided to procrastinate and keep their tires on, which is kind of a sensible thing to do. And we've had others sort of plowed ahead and said, it's spring, I'm ready for spring, so we're gonna change our tires anyhow, and we'll take a couple of days of uh, slipping around just to, to get rid of winter, so. Big potholes are now accumulating water. These are past repairs that were filled in. Warmer temperatures expanded the ground, and the latest snowfall refroze the ground. It's a big mess. And the spring storm doesn't just wreck roads, it creates flood headaches for city workers. This is one of the busier times to be in streets um, because you're still getting freezing temperatures at nights, but then you've got a lot of melt during the day. Um, so we'll go and expose catch basins, like clear the snow away from them. But if you do it too early in the year and it's still freezing at night, then the cold air gets down low and can freeze it deeper and cause more problems. So it's kind of a hurry up and wait until the weather's just right. Brandon is no stranger to flooding, with 2011 being our last huge flood of the Assiniboine River, forcing families to evacuate their homes. Council works with the province to monitor shellmouth dam levels because that has an impact with the Assiniboine water levels. To avoid street level flooding, snow piles like this one are removed and taken to a designated area at our landfill. But that won't keep us out of trouble, as a major storm is hitting Winnipeg and the U.S. states to the south of us. And with temperatures expected to soar to a high of 17 this week, that means a lot of water is coming our way. From Westman This Week, I'm Sydney Houston.